I want to come to this segment in the podcast and talk about something you literally just released, which is Digital Launchpad. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this is a very interesting concept because my take on it is, as we've said before, e-learning companies have been around for, let's just say, the past decade. Mm -hmm. But I like this twist on it because what you're doing is the people who are in, inside teaching or you can learn stuff from are already well-known people already. Mm -hmm. For example, I know you've got Mike Thurston on there, Jordan Welch, and yourself, obviously, as well. So the fact that you've got known people in there is bringing people in. But if you could dive more into it, what makes it different to any other e-learning company that is out there? To be honest, listen, there's options out there like Masterclass. I think Masterclass is a hundred, I don't think you can pay monthly. It's yearly $180. Potentially they've changed their pricing now, but from what last I remember it was $180. So for the average person to spend $180 to learn how to cook, like I love Masterclass. I think Masterclass is sick. And for me to spend $180 just to like potentially maybe one day watch a course on how to like produce a song. Yeah, I mean, goddamn, that kitchen looks really clean. <laughs> it's not been cooked in, has it? No, there's a chef's kitchen behind the oh, door. Right, okay, bro. So all the mess is back there. <laughs> but like, you know, I don't cook, but like, let's say I wanted to cook. I'm like, cool, I have this like beautiful course that'll teach me how to do it. Uh, so you've got something like that, but that doesn't really teach people like hard practical skills. We shoot all our stuff on Red Raptors. Uh, which is Netflix grade quality, quality. Like yeah. our setup costs a hundred thousand dollars. And from this month on, we have a new program, a new 10 to 20 hour program launching every single month for $37. And if you want to buy the yearly, it's a 40% discount. You're paying 74 cents a day. And not only that, you've got all the events, all the meetups, all the calls. I think there's 15 coaching calls a week inside of there. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, earlier you asked what my mission is and growing up my mission, and it still is to this day, I just needed some time to realize it was to reform the education system. And sometimes you can say something and sometimes something can be an intention. And that was always my intention. It, I just didn't have a plan. And this is the first time in my life looking at digital launch fair where I'm like, fuck, I actually genuinely from the ball of my heart feel like I'm doing something to help the education system because there is nothing cheaper out there. I mean, if some, I don't know anything that's under $37 a month or 74 cents a day, if you buy the yearly plan, that's going to give you that level of quality. Now, here's the thing. We, I, I could very easily, for that price point, I could very easily shoot everything on Loom and a little shitty web camera and stuff like that, which once again, respectfully, our competitors do. And great, that's all on them. If that's what they want to do. I just wanted to take something like I've been running businesses for years. And as I said, I feel like sometimes online people think I'm just this content creator. Like I'm not a content creator. I, I am a business person that creates content, to be honest, to drive business to his businesses that are applicable to his personal brand. Yep. I like businesses. So for me, digital launchpad, I guess, is just a culmination of you know, let me show you what we can actually do. And we have great relationships with all the best service providers out there. So all the way down to, if you want to buy a digital launch pad, beautiful, download the app. Which one of our competitors can say, go download the app right now. Yeah, I was surprised when I went to the website and it said download on app. Go download the app right now and you can, uh, it'll just charge on your Apple Pay, $37 a month. Yeah. You know the reason why we're allowed on the app store? because we do, we have good business practice. If you want to try digital launchpad right now, and bear in mind, the second you come into digital launchpad, you get roughly around 200 hours of content. And once again, this isn't 200 hours of content by, taught by fucking some 17 year old uh, in his bedroom that no one's heard about. No, no, no. This is 200 hours of content taught by Mike Thurston, taught by Jordan Welch, taught by myself, taught by all the way down to one of our programs we have coming out is with a guy called uh, Tony Jeffries. He has 2 million subscribers on YouTube. He's the largest boxing YouTube channel. And he teaches a 10 hour bo boxing masterclass on how to actually get started but with boxing fundamentals, find a gym, how to build up the confidence to go into the gym, step into the gym, uh, 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 tips on sparring, everything you need to know. Which is interesting because that's more of providing someone with health benefits Correct. rather than wealth benefits. So you're kind of covering, I done a podcast um, two or three weeks ago, just released yesterday where he was saying the top industries that are making them a lot of money is health, wealth, relationships. Mm -hmm. So can we see something in Digital Launchpad that also, also to do with relationships? Because if that's the case, 
then we're covering all three yeah, on most definitely. Right there. yeah most definitely and we, we have stuff like that already in there you know even some of mike thurston stuff he talks about uh dating relationships in fact to the, this day actually uh i had a call with uh, one of a uh, new coach that we're bringing on and the reason i brought this coach on uh is because he is happily married with kids and i said there's not many people out there there's not many mentors for men who are happily married with kids and you've got people on here and once again i've always tried to make clear that when i talk about my opinion like there's things that i can really speak on if you want me to talk about how to build a personal brand i i feel like hand on heart i could speak i could speak about that better than f just about fucking anyone else on earth because yep. a lot of other people who became well known it was a fluke it was an accident no no i said I am going to grow my audience to this and I fucking did it and I executed it not on one platform on every single platform systematically you know like I let's say for uh, short form like all of the uh, short form and all of the uh, clips you see on TikTok blah, blah, I don't have an affiliate program these aren't people that are posting it to make money this is my internal team that uh, pumps out 300 million views a month on our own accounts so I've systemized and done this on fucking every single platform I can really speak on that, on personal brand stuff. If someone wants to ask me about business, I can really speak on business to the extent that I've grown my businesses. I can't speak about what it's like to be in the hundreds of millions because the God's honest truth is I'm not there yet. Now, if you want to take the multiple, <laughs> you know, it's funny, I see people do this. They'll be like, oh, but if you take the multiple, like, here's the thing, if you take the multiple of some of my companies, yeah, I'm worth about $500 million then. But no one's going to fucking buy those companies. Yeah, because the thing is, companies are only willing or worth what someone's willing to pay for it. Correct. I'll give you an example. I don't have it around me, but uh, I was I talk about a lot of stuff with my friends. I have uh, one of my companies, Gadget. It's my eyewear yeah, brand. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I remember you putting that. I don't know if you remember uh, mid podcast last time we done it. It came to the door. Remember? I think it was um, a test sample or something like that. Potentially, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a, it was a new uh, Range uh, production yeah. production run we were going. That that company does millions of dollars a year. Okay, that company does millions of dollars a year with zero advertising. By the way, mm -hmm. millions of dollars a year, zero advertising obviously incredible, incredible margin. So millions of dollars a year in profit. You know what that business is worth? Go on. Absolutely fuck all. Do you know why that business is worth fuck all? Because it says Gadget on I'm it. I'm just going to say the name. And this is why like people really don't understand what makes a, a business sellable and not sellable. Like here's the thing. I could take, I could say my e-learning company is worth $400 million. If you, if you, if you want me to apply multiples to it, okay, it's worth $400 million. But no one's going to fucking pay that for it. Like, and this is where once again, I, I think anyone who's really anyone who's really in the business game knows like what business is actually like and what businesses is worth and what business isn't and what businesses are a risk. You know, as you said, you talk about businesses worth what people are willing to pay for it. You know, going back to that gadget example, I just brought on a new business partner for that company. He sold his eyewear business, exact same industry for a few hundred million dollars seven years ago. He's just recently come out of his non-compete. A clause. Yep. So we've partnered up. His his, damn that. Oh, seven years for the non compete clause. Yeah, I, I don't. It was it was a little uh, less than that, that, but it's, still, yeah. yeah, long time. Uh, I mean, bear in mind he's recreating a, the exact same business model, which yeah. is an e commerce eyewear brand. So it's I I understand it, and we are scaling up Gadji as a few million dollars a year now, which you know is is nice. It's a respectable business, but it's nothing crazy. And in one year, we're changing the name. Why are we changing the name? Because we're trying to sell the fucking business. And even if the business does 50, even if we 10x the business, and it does fucking $50 million a year in revenue, it's still worth fuck all. But arguably, arguably someone will be willing to pay for it because though it does have your last name in it, if someone's trying to buy it and scale it globally, worldwide, massively, what's the difference between Gucci and Gadzi? Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's a name at the Is end Gucci of the day. alive? No. Exactly. So the, the, that's the thing. Gucci is worth more. If you if they had the exact same numbers, the exact, like the, the business fundamentals were the same. It was the same. Fundamentally, it was the same business. And you take Gucci or you take Tom Ford, which one is worth more? Gucci is worth more because there's less risk associated to it. The thing with Tom Ford is Tom Ford could do some crazy... Tom Ford's still alive. Yeah. So Tom Ford can go can do go some... And create another brand or something. Could go do some fucking crazy shit. He could go AWOL. He could do something. He could make a racist remark or what the media views as anti-Semitic. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now the price of Tom Ford has plummeted. Yep. The value of Tom Ford as a company has plummeted. 
even though he he is let's say he's sold the business he's out the business completely he has literally zero well, because he said it yeah. exactly i don't know if you remember during corona times that people were so stupid they were messaging corona's instagram yeah, yeah, yeah. They, saying, they why done. did you start this <laughs> like that's how stupid people are so their stock went down well I, I get what you're saying so what would you change the name to have you got something in mind or it's gonna be something five letter five letter it's gonna be something five letter easy to say yeah that's it rolls off the tongue rolls off the tongue. just like rolex okay so when did you decide you want to sell that business i if i keep it the way it is right now it will continue to be a few million dollar a year business which once again is very good that's nothing laugh like to laugh at but it's just if i have a opportunity here once again to partner with someone who has literally sold his company for hundreds of millions of dollars so he knows this like the back of his hand and i know him personally as an entrepreneur and we've had a relationship in the past like we're you know uh, we have a lot of respect for each other and we know the way we operate as, as business people for me it's just like either it's a hundred percent guaranteed to be a few million a year or if i could take a 25 percent chance that it could sell for 250 million i'm at a stage in my life right now now maybe five years ago i would rather take and to be honest no five years ago i would rather take a hundred percent guarantee that it does a few million dollars a year than a 20 percent guarantee 20 percent chance that it sells for 250 million dollars and an 80 percent chance that it uh, flops hmm. and it burns to the ground and i my opinion is always that you should get rich guaranteed yeah i would rather get um you guarantee the wealth. I would rather get guaranteed well off than like um, a potentially like unicorn, like generational money. Yeah. I'd rather I'd rather be guaranteed well off than because one's just an idea, one's actual reality. Yeah, one's actual reality. And the thing is, once you have that reality where you build cash flow businesses, and this is why I always tell people, like, don't do as I do. Like, I know everyone's like, oh yeah, look at this guy telling people to do what he doesn't do anymore. It's like, yes, you fucking idiot because you shouldn't take the risks that I take because risks will come back to bite you in the ass. Now, I'm in a position in my life where I take risks that basically have no risk because I have leverage, because I have these competitive advantages and I don't get involved in something unless I have a competitive advantage. Going back to this example with Gadgie where we're now, you know, I brought on a, a business partner. What's my competitive advantage? Uh, well, the business already does a few million dollars a year and my business partner, literally sold his company in the exact same industry doing the exact same thing for hundreds of millions of dollars he, he that's my competitive doing. advantage yeah he knows what he's doing he knows what he's doing he's in the game so and there's you know talking about competitive advantages even my first software company that i started in 2020 i had many opportunities to start software companies the reason i didn't was because i knew i did i knew i didn't have that in me and I knew that I couldn't do that on my own. It was only until I had my business partner who was actually a client at my agency. It was only until that moment where he was working, he was already had a software that was in a different industry or servicing a different kind of customer. And once again, we took that, repositioned it, that turned into agency flow, which was my software for uh, uh, you know multiple years that we've now rebranded to Flozy to go to an even larger market. So yeah, for me, I'm always looking for opportunities where I have competitive advantages. I'm also looking for opportunities where I can take things to that next level and I can take these risks where maybe it becomes a unicorn or maybe it turns into nothing. But that's fine because I'm good here and I've got my other stuff here that is safe, secure, set. Yeah. And going back to Digital Launchpad for a second, I know in the last podcast we discussed that you already have an e-learning company, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the actual difference between the e-learning company that was already existing and Digital Launchpad? Because... I don't think, I don't recall us speaking about Digital Launch Ride in the first mm. podcast. No. So I don't know if the idea was created around that time and soon implemented after, or how did it all come to life? What gave you the idea and why separate the two? Yeah, for sure. So Digital Launchpad, uh, it was an idea in my mind for a long time. The Our whole tagline with Digital Launchpad, now, uh, uh, as you mentioned, we've got stuff in there about relationships, boxing. Uh, you know, my tailor is in there and he teaches men how to, pick the right colors for their skin tone, how to go in and, and tailor your suit, how to pick the right items, how to pick blah, blah, how to basically elevate your style and dress well as man. And I'm not dressed particularly well. It's just good, man. You, it's your house, you dress as you want. <laughs> but, but usually, you know, I'm, one of the things I'm known for is having pretty good style. And all that to say that we bring together all of these things and all of these different uh, experts and educators. And 
that comes down to sell people what they want, give them what they need. Like no one's going to buy a program for detox protocols. For example, we've got an educator inside there that helps men uh, detox and increase their testosterone levels and basically just live a better life. But people aren't really going to buy because of that. So our whole tagline with Digital Launchpad, we're not trying to say you're going to become a millionaire. We're not trying to say you're going to become blah, blah, this. Our promise is we're here to help you make your first thousand dollars online. That's it. Not a thousand dollars a month, not ten thousand dollars a month. Now there's people in there making tens of thousands of dollars a month, and I'm always like shocked by the level of quality and uh, how smart a lot of the people in there are. Uh, but that's not our promise. Our promise is we're gonna help you get to a thousand dollars, make your first thousand dollars online, and we have roughly around three and a half years to do so because our yearly plan is uh, two hundred and seventy dollars. So that's about three and a half years. So you can fail with our product for three and a half years and then succeed. Before you, yeah, before, interesting. So you can't lose. Like it's, it's impossible to lose with the product. And that's why we've set the, uh, the bar and the standards so low. Now, if you want to make $10,000 a month and if you want to really elevate your career and build like a real proper business, that's where we have our other product, which is Agency Accelerator. The thing is, I can't, like for example, the thing is I'm a very self-aware person in the sense like I could sit here and go, no, no, I have e-commerce businesses like, uh, like a uh, gadget, like, you know, big uh, day. Uh, like big day. And I could sit here and I could go, no, I have e-commerce businesses. Like the, in the first year are making millions and millions of dollars. And I could say, oh, so I know how to run a successful e-commerce brand. No, I don't because that was off the back of my personal brand. Mm -hmm. So it'd be disingenuous for me to sit here and say that I'm an expert in e-commerce and blah, blah. That's not true. Once again, I use my philosophy which is I'm only going to get into businesses if I have a competitive advantage, but I can't teach you that as a beginner. Yeah. So the only thing, there's a few things that I can teach, but really the one that this is the business I ran for six years is an agency. Mm -hmm. And especially now, actually funny enough with the agency accelerator, 75% of it is taught by other people. Once again, th going back to three years ago compared to now, three years ago, I didn't have the audience. I didn't have the pool. I didn't have the financial means to bring in the people that I bring in now. Now I have millions and millions of dollars of budget to bring in the best of the best people. I have the pull to be like, like really like let this sink in and, and comprehend the fact that like, look at who we have in, in Digital Launchpad. We're talking about the biggest people inside Digital Launchpad. I couldn't pull that shit off three years ago. Now, it doesn't matter who in the world it is. If I make a phone call, they are going to come on the platform Yeah, because I have that sort of pull. So I've taken that same philosophy and I've applied that to Agency Accelerator, which is our higher ticket product. Uh, and for example, the outreach inside of agency accelerator is I thought, okay, you know, I could bring in an expert to teach outreach, or I could bring in the person who owns this multi hundred million dollar software that all of the people doing outreach use. So the person who teaches all of the outreach inside of agency accelerator is the owner of a software called Lemlist that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And that every single agency on earth uses to do their cold outbound. In the last month alone, they've processed $118 million of deals. Or there's been $118 million of deals that have come in because of people using Lemlist to do their cold outbound. So that's how I've been able to kind of bolster up the products and fill in the, the uh, plug in the places where I'm not as competent, or maybe I was really competent five years ago, but I'm not as competent these days. So that's why we have so many, I try to give people so many options inside a digital launchpad. If someone comes to me and says, I want to make $10,000 a month consistently without fucking my life up and losing all my savings, because there's certain businesses, and this is what people really need to understand. You can pick any business, you'll make $1,000. Listen, at the end of the day, if worse comes to worse, you can go to your entire street, knock on every single door or your neighbors that have been your neighbors for however long and say, listen, I will personally list all of your shit on eBay. And this is stuff that you were never, you're never going to make this money anyways. I'm going to give you 70% of the profits and I'll keep 30% just for listing it. Can you just spend 30 minutes a day, get together everything that you have and I will personally list it. You can leave it in the house. I'll let you take the photos in the house. The house, everything will be here when uh, you see the payment come in. I'll go take it to the post office, blah, blah, all this stuff. And you can make $1,000 that way. So you, there's 101 different ways. There's thousands, there's loads of, of, different ways to make thousands of ways to yeah. make $1,000. I wouldn't say that there's thousands of ways with little risk to make $10,000 a month consistently. And you're saying an agency can do that? A service-based business. Okay. Uh, an online service-based business can do that. 
so when I say service-based business, a service-based business is tech, uh, personal trainer is a service-based business, but the issue is there's a clear correlation between how much input you have and how much money the business AKA you makes. Yeah. So that's why I like service-based business, but the service, if you're going to sell a service, you might as well serve it, uh, sell a service to not broke people and not broke people are businesses. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is something else people really need to get through their head. A thousand dollars to you and a thousand dollars charged to your business are two different things. All right. Now, obviously you're, you know, if you're in Dubai, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a different story, but let's say for example, you're in the UK. Okay. I charge you a, a, a thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, first of all, you get 20% back. So you instantly get VAT back Yep. or 19% or whatever. No, yes. 20%. Uh, I was thinking about the yeah, old, you got countries old, mixed up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so first of all, you get 20% back on the VAT. That's number one. Number two, now you've brought down your tax bill. Yep. Whereas if I was to charge you a thousand pounds personally, well, you're probably going to have to make in your tax bracket, you're going to have to make 2000 pounds to end up with a thousand pounds. So I've costed you 2000 pounds technically in earnings from the business. Mm -hmm. So people also need to understand this is why when, you know, people are like, oh, but why would this business pay me? Or like, you know, 2000 a month sounds like so much money, blah, blah, this, that. You don't understand even that shitty coffee shop that you think no one goes to, they even have 40,000 a month in expenses. Like we're talking about like the shitty small coffee shop between rent, staff, insurance, uh, you know, uh, food Employees, and beverage, everything. everything. Their expenses are 40,000 a month. When you, if you come to them with a service that can either bring immense convenience, can bring eyeballs in, could bring business in. And I also want people to get a lot more clever in the way that they uh, choose services. Cause everyone tries to choose, oh, I'm just gonna do Facebook ads or Google ads. Like that's, it's a very saturated market. You can do that and that works in, with specific niches, but there's so many different services that you could offer out there. You genuinely could spend three weeks learning Zapier and learn backend automations. And you could go into businesses and do their full backend automation setup for $5,000 a pop. Like people actually don't realize how quick it is to learn a skill and then monetize that skill. And if you're going to monetize that skill, you could either sell to consumers where you're not going to make that much money, but why not just sell to businesses who have money, money and are yeah. spending that kind of money anyways. Yeah. So I want to make it clear. I don't care if it's an agency or what, for me, it's just a service-based business. It's just, if you're gonna get into a service-based business, you might as well deal with people who have money and also be in businesses that you can walk away from. Like as an agency, you can take the day off and your team can deliver services for you. As a personal trainer, you can't take the day off and your team will deliver the uh, yeah, services Yeah, because your service relies on you being present. Correct. So, I'll uh, give you an example that's more correlated. As a videographer, you can't take the day off and your business makes money. If you own a creative agency, you can take the day off and your business makes money because yeah. you've got people working uh, for you and yeah. they don't even need to be employees. They can be contractors. So correct me if I'm wrong, because I watched your, I think video, the video came out yesterday mm -hmm. uh, about the agency accelerator program, right? Mm -hmm. And you are saying you get the client basically being the, let's just say the coffee shop mm -hmm. and then the actual work, you're hiring someone to do it. You're just the middleman essentially putting correct. the two together, right? Yep. So essentially from day one, there's a possibility where you, I mean, the, out of the, the amount of work you do is minimal. Correct. And I will say that that's extremely oversimplified and I want to make it clear to everyone that I'm, it's, this isn't some fucking party trick. This isn't like, oh, I know nothing about, let's say for example, that Zapier um, example. I know nothing about Zapier, but I'm going to hire this guy in uh, uh, Brazil uh, who's going to do, uh, come in and clean up uh, this business's Zapier integrations or uh, place in their business where I can add Zapier integrations. I'm going to add it to, uh, you know, uh, uh, increase efficiency in the business. You're not going to like find someone in Brazil for $300 that's that, that's going to deliver on that service and, you know, $300 and it'll take them the day to do it and then sell that service for $2,000 and know nothing about Zapier. That's all I'm saying. Like you still need to know something about the service. But what I'm saying is honestly, within 14 days, you can get pretty up to scratch. Like, and obviously inside of Agency Accelerator, we try to teach people everything. And I also don't want this to turn into like some uh, uh, pitch for the product or whatever. So I'm going to try to refrain from speaking about that product specifically and uh, just speak more as a, in a generalization. And, you know, all that to say that 
what you're doing in that situation is arbitrage. And if you look at Uber, like Uber can onboard 10,000 new Uber drivers and it costs them absolutely nothing because all of the risk is on the driver's side. In the same way, you could line up five contractors. I'm not saying this is a smart thing to do because you should have, you can have any service and work with any niche and get it to $10,000 a month. $100,000 a month is a different story. I don't believe that you can have any service or any niche and get it to $100,000 a month. That's a different beast. We're, this is a to totally different animal. But to get to $10,000 a month, you can have any service in any niche and you should stick to that. But if you were hypothetically to get a Facebook ads expert from South Africa, uh, a Zapier expert from Brazil, uh, then you went to uh, Slovakia and got a email marketing expert and you had these people, they don't cost you anything. These contractors don't cost you anything just to have them ready to go. But the second that you sign an email marketing client, okay, well, first of all, the client pays you up front. That's you, how agency works. Uh, even when you work with any half decent law firm, they expect prepayment up front. They want uh, money on account. So you're collecting the money up front as the agency and the contractor, every contractor, employee, everyone knows you get paid once you do the work. Yeah, of course. So it creates this positive cash flow. And there's certain businesses in the world that work this way. And that's why they become so successful. For example, insurance companies. Insurance companies are actually technically banks in the way that they operate because they collect money from you and you may never deposit, uh, you, you know, you may never uh, uh, take out that money or uh, take out that insurance claim ever. You know, there's people who have been paying for insurance, car insurance for 20 years and never, never even had, had a crash, claim. Yeah, yeah nothing yep. like that, yeah. So they basically get to take all of that cash flow, take all of that money in, and then they get to go ahead and invest that in different places. And if you take that same principle and that same philosophy, it's actually very similar to what we're doing here, which is arbitrage. We're getting paid up front and then the contractor is getting paid once the work gets delivered. So you have that little positive uh, arbitrage play and you have that cash flow play uh, right there. It's kind of in the same way like drop shipping. Yeah. You, you know, in drop shipping, you get the payment up front and then obviously you pay for the product. Very similar thing. And that means that the risk is, in that drop shipping example, it means the risk is very low. My only concern and the only thing I make clear to people, and by the way, as I said, we have drop shipping taught by Jordan Welch, who's probably one of the foremost experts in the world. So I, I'm a, I am a fan of drop shipping if it's done in the right way. And as long as you don't risk all of your money on advertising, because yeah. the thing is what I love about a service-based business is you can fail for eight months and it doesn't matter. Like when I'm speaking to beginners, I always try to make it clear. You want something where you can literally fail for eight months, nine months, 10 months, a year. And it doesn't matter because what you're spending $30 a month on like a couple of softwares that you need to run the, the software. Oh, what you, you're spending $49 a month at my software company, Flozy, to run your entire operations. Listen, I get it. It's still $50 a month. It's not ideal to lose that, but a year in you spent $600, you get one client, $1,500. That's already I mean, paid there and then. Paid there and then. Yeah. Whereas sometimes with these other business models, for example, Amazon FBA, sometimes you, you, you know, like I know what it's like. I've put millions and millions and millions of dollars into physical product stocks and physical brands that I have. And look, I have one of my companies, I have dead stock sitting from 2021. I was actually found out about it yesterday. I was like, oh, listen, it's not crazy amounts of money, but like even seeing that hurts. And I was like, fuck, like I misread how much stock I needed and it's just been sitting there. And that's fine for me in my position. That doesn't hurt me. But if I was a be beginner and I've put all this money into stock and the market doesn't want it in the way I think it wants it, I'm at a big potential loss. So that's why I'm such a big fan of service-based businesses because you basically can just fail for a long time and it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, it's not going to wipe you out. See, here's my thing with it. I'm, I'm, I completely agree with you. I know it's a business that works. Mm. My only caveat to it is the fact that nothing's as simple as it seems right correct and in this case i know that service-based businesses like that like an agency like a social media agency whatever the case may be can be very 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 competitive so for someone to get their first client in the first place may be the biggest task out of them all they may learn everything from yourself mm -hmm. but getting their first client might be the biggest strain of the whole thing that they've ever got put together yeah you're, you're correct but that's the same thing with anything in life. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it goes without saying. 
and you are correct, but that's why I preface this by saying that I love seeing people fail for 18 months of this and not be bankrupted because I can't think of many businesses in the world where you can start it for 18 months. You can fail, 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 and it won't bankrupt you mm -hmm. and it won't wipe you out because you try and fail at an e-commerce business for 18 months. You're, you're going to be looking at some serious debt. You yeah. try to, uh, um, and by the way, that's why, for example, in Digital Launchpad, we, most of the methods that we teach don't involve any ad spend. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of it is organic because I've, like my number one goal is I don't want my audience to lose money. I don't want my audience to try something and then it's like get wiped out. Because I understand the reason is because I understand how difficult it is when you first start. And I understand that when you first start, more than likely you will fail. It will be harder for longer than you think it will be. But once you get your first success, it'll probably be quicker than you could ever anticipate. Yeah, of course, yeah. And that's just the way it work, uh, you yeah. know, the world works when it rains, it pours. So I do agree with your statement that getting that first client can seem monumental and can seem very, very difficult. And it probably will be more difficult than you think it will be. You know, when I got my first client, I wasn't really intending to get a client. It just happened accidentally. And that was August of 2016. It was seven months later that I got my second client. So that's seven months. Most people would give up in that time. But one of the reasons I didn't give up was it wasn't costing me anything to try. You know, you know maybe what are 30 pounds a month on some softwares I was using back then. Yeah. So you know how you mentioned there that you've got clients that have been making upwards of $10,000 a month, mm -hmm. right? Have you got a model that's going to come out where it may cost someone, you know, substantially more, but then it unlocks a different... It, it's almost like it's not made. It's not a program made for beginners. It's now made for okay, cool. You've you've made your first ten k within this field consistently. Let's just say you've got to do it for a period of six months straight before you can do anything else, and then they they can now enter another realm of the digital world that's costing a lot more, yeah. but they can gain a lot more back. For example, if we're given the Tate uh, analogy, then Tate example here's the real world, and then his upsell to that is the war room. Yeah. Have you got anything like that? come in or do I have intention to make products more expensive probably not I've been actually been trending in the other direction and the reason why is because like with my especially with my e-learning stuff this has been my goal the entire time which is to reform the education system and for me to have a $30,000 program doesn't reform the education system it doesn't like get me to where I want to go with that mission and then financially like I'm I'm okay. I'm pretty good with my other businesses. So like, I don't need to worry about that or try to extract as much juice or this or that. I just had a question regarding the people who are actually coaching in the digital launch pad. Yeah. Just a simple question. What's in it for them? Is it, do they get a commission from the, the monthly subscription or is it to be associated with yourself or how does it all work? Once again, when you, I mean, most of these people don't need to be associated. Bear in mind, most of these people inside have millions and millions of followers. So there's a few angles I could go. Some, I guess I could say it, but it won't mean anything here. First of all, there are good incentive structures for every single person that's inside. The reason I've been able to do this and bring the people that I've been able to bring on is because they all benefit in some way. And I structure deals specific for some people, money is all they care about. Mm -hmm. And that's just the truth. And I know that's all they care about for some people. For example, there's one individual who through his teaching, in some of his stuff, he uses a software that people don't know, but he basically owns the software and he's now sold the software. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, interesting. And he, he was able to sell the software because he had a hockey stick growth since it being inside of Digital Launchpad. Now here's the thing, it's actually the best software. Like we don't allow softwares on there that aren't actually the best solution. It just so happened that the best solution was the solution that he owned, uh, which made me double happy and then triple happy when, you know, he sold the, the company for life, life changing sums of money. So that's that one side of thing as to why people come onto digital launchpad. The other side of things is once people are in my ecosystem, and this is why I, I maybe you've experienced part of it, uh, or some of it, you haven't met the rest of the team, bro. Once you meet the rest of the team being around my team, I've seen it with multi, multi, multi millionaires where I've had multi millionaires drop try to drop everything they're doing to work at one of my companies because they just want to be a part of the team like once you're around my organization it's like it's like this different world it's you know i as I said i i can say it on camera but it it won't mean anything to someone until they're actually around 
me and my team and they see the way that we operate and just how much fun we have while we're doing it. So I think that's one of the big reasons as well as people teach inside of Digital Launchpad because they want to be close to the team and they know that it's going to benefit them in some way or another. They, they know a benefit. And I think also the thing is they know that I'm a good long-term play hmm. and I will give myself a pat on the back. I will still be around in five, for five or 10 years. And without going into specifics, there's very few people I can say about that in this industry. You know, lots of people with lots of things going on and I don't know if they'll be here in five or 10 years. So I think a lot of people that are in educate just know that I'm always a person that will build bigger and better things and try to get people involved and elevate people. And I think they just want to be a part of that as well.